Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Mathusiasm. Today we're going to solve this challenging equation cosine x is equal to arc cosine x. Our first attempt is to get rid of arc cosine on the right hand side. Let's take cosine on both sides. We have cosine of cosine x is equal to x. Be careful about the left hand side. It's taking cosine two times, not the square of cosine. Just like the square root of the square root of x is equal to x to the power of 1 over 2, everything to the power of 1 over 2, which is equal to x to the power of 1 over 4. On the other hand, the square root of x whole square is equal to x. So definitely, the square root of square root of x is not equal to the square root of x whole square. That means taking the operation twice is not the same as squaring it. Anyway, this approach makes the equation more and more complicated. However, trust me, later on, we're going to solve the simple equation cosine x equals to x to find the answer of the original equation. If we only consider one variable x, it's really a hard task. So why not extend it to two variables x and y? We shall find something interesting. Consider the graphs of y equals to cosine x and y equals to r cosine x. What's the relation between the original equation and the two graphs? Let's focus on the points of intersection P. Because it lies on the two graphs, therefore it satisfies both equations. In other words, the x-coordinate of P is the solution of the equation cosine x equals to r cosine x. Now, the algebra problem is changed to a coordinate geometry problem. So, what's next? At this moment, we have to look deeper into the properties of the two functions. What can you say about y equals to cosine x and y equals to r cosine x? Right, they are the inverse functions of each other. Let's look at another example of inverse functions. It might give us some ideas. Consider y equals to e to the power of x and y equals to log x. We know that the exponential graph and the log graph are symmetrical about the green line y equals to x. So the same argument applies to our case now. The graphs of y equals to cosine x and y equals to r cosine x are also symmetrical about the line y equals to x. Moreover, we have something nice here. The point P lies on this green line. So the coordinates also satisfy y equals to x. Instead of looking at the blue and the red curves, we shall focus on y equals to cosine x and y equals to x only. The inverse trigonometric function is replaced by a linear function. It makes life much easier. So we're going to solve a simple equation x equals to cosine x. That's what we have mentioned in the introduction of the video. See, it really is. That's the power of coordinate geometry. It helps us solve a challenging algebra problem. But still, there seems to be no direct way to solve this equation. If we can change the cosine function into a polynomial, then it would be great. How can we do that? Let's look at the Taylor series expansion of cosine x about x equal to 0. That is, cosine x is equal to 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the power 4 over 4 factorial minus x to the power 6 over 6 factorial plus dot dot dot. Now, take the approximation up to x squared term, then we have x is equal to 1 minus x squared over 2. Multiply both sides by 2, we get this. Putting x squared to the left, then it's x squared plus 2x is equal to 2. This is just a quadratic equation. Although it cannot be factorized, we can solve it by completing the square on the left-hand side. So we add 1 on both sides of the equation. It becomes x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 3. Now, the left-hand side is bracket x plus 1 whole square. Taking the square root, we have x is equal to the square root of 3 minus 1, or the negative square root of 3 minus 1. The negative value should be rejected because from the graph, x must be positive. Therefore, we have an approximate value, x is equal to root 3 minus 1, which is around 0 0.73205 dot dot dot. 
If we use graphing software, a more accurate answer is 0.7390 Our approximation is pretty nice, isn't it? Well, can we get an even better answer from the Taylor series? Sure, why not? Let's take the approximation up to the x to the power 4 term. Therefore, the equation is x is equal to 1 minus x squared over 2 plus x to the power 4 over 24. Simplify and rearrange the terms, we have a polynomial equation of power 4. We call it a quartic equation. x to the power 4 minus 12x squared minus 24x plus 24 is equal to 0. Again, it cannot be factorized. But don't worry, there's a general formula to solve the quartic equation. The solution is the following, which is approximately 0.73921 dot dot dot. Well, it's closer to the final answer, but the formula is just too complicated. So the quadratic approximation is already a pretty good one. Do you think so? If you want to know more interesting problems in trigonometry, please check out the videos at the playlist shown on the screen and in the descriptions below. See you in the next video.